This video builds on what we know about de Marwa's theorem to go ahead and use it to find um, roots, and usually roots of higher powers than just a square root of complex numbers. So a reminder of de Marwa's theorem first, which says that if we have a complex number and we raise it to the power of n, the result will be that the modulus um, gets raised to the power of n and the argument gets multiplied by n. Now we can um, do this in reverse, thinking about that power being a fractional power, and then we can do roots. So that looks like this. So if you were doing something like you wanted to um, work out the fifth root of something, then you can do the fifth root of the modulus and then divide the, oh sorry, yep, fifth root of the modulus and then divide the argument by five. So let's see how that looks with an example. So if we want to solve z to the 4 equals 4 plus 3i, what we're being asked to do is find the fourth root of 4 plus 3i. So we can apply de Marwa's theorem like this using the fractional power of a quarter. Now the only thing first before we can go straight into that is that we have our complex number is currently in rectangular form. And we can only apply de Marwa's theorem once it's in polar form. So we're going to go ahead and switch that. Now, I'm not working through the steps of switching that over. You can look that up on a previous video. You can also use your calculator to do that switch. I'm also going to work in degrees here just to try and keep things um, a little easier to understand as we go through. So we have that this is the same as 5 cis 36.9 degrees. So we do our modulus to the power of quarter, which comes out to 1.495. Um, and 36.9 divided by 4 comes to 9.2 degrees. So Z will be equal to uh, 1.495 cis 9.2 degrees. But this is actually only one solution. And we know that if we're doing something to the power of four, we should get four solutions out of that. So we need to think now, how do we come up with the other four? So I'm gonna call this Z1. This is just our first solution. Now, where the other solutions come from is the fact that we know that as we rotate around the axis, we can get repeated roots on that 36.9 degrees. So think about what this looked like to begin with. We had a modulus of 5 and an angle of 36.9 degrees. Now, we could have got to the same place um, of having that number if we'd done the angle being 360 plus 36.9 degrees. So our second solution comes from that one. So we have this equivalent polar form um, to this one where we added on that 360 degrees. So now our argument is 396.9 degrees. So our second solution for what Z could be is now the modulus hasn't changed. So that's still 1.495. But we've got cis of 396.9 divided by 4, which comes to 99.2. Two. Oh, let me tidy that. 99.2 degrees. Now, if we continue that logic, we can carry on adding as many lots of 360 as we need to. So we do 36.9 add 360k. That k is what we call the general form um, of this. So to get the next one, we would um, add on another 360 and we get 729.9 degrees. Um, and if we divide that by 4, we get our third root to be 1.495 cis of 182.5 degrees. And then our last one, we'll do another 360 degrees like so, and dividing that by four to get our fourth solution here, we've got 1.495 cis 272.47 uh, actually, I'll just write, round that up. There we go. So now we've got our four roots to that equation. Now we can express this in a general form as well as working out each of the individual roots by using this K notation that we were using. So I'm going to adapt this to um, tidy it up a little bit and put it more in a general form. So if we go back to what we had at the beginning with it being 5 cis 36.9 degrees, then actually we can rewrite that as 5 cis of 36.9 plus 360k. And that is called our general form. 
which then means that we can write our solution in a general form as well. So Z will be equal to 1.495 cis. Now, if we are dividing that module, uh, the argument by 4, then we get the 9.2 plus 360 divided by 4 is 90. So it's plus 90k. And we have our solution in a general form now. And this I should have noted was in degrees, otherwise it looks like it might be radians. So here's our general form of that solution. I'll do one more example, but we'll move a little faster through this one. So we're solving z cubed equals 1 plus 1i. First of all, turn that into polar form. So that's root 2 cis pi by 4. This one I'm going to do in radians just to show you both ways. Now remember, if this is a general form, it can be pi by 4 plus 360, or in radians, plus 2 pi to find all of our roots there. So z will be equal to root 2 to the power of a third. So we're probably going to need to switch into decimals now. And then cis of pi by 4 plus 2 pi all divided by 3. So that will be pi by 4 divided by 3 becomes pi by 12. 2 pi will be 2 pi by 3. Um, so that's the, oh, whoops, I missed out the k. So this is 2 pi k. So we do k rotations as many times as we need. So in here we've got 2 pi k divided by 3. And that gives our general formula. Now if you needed to list all of the solutions, you can go ahead and plug in what you need as the counters for k to make that work. So z1, so the first solution, will be root 2 to the power of a third. This and our first solution will simply be of pi by 12. Our counter for k is 0 on our first solution. We don't add any um, rotations there. And then our second one will have the same um, modulus. But this time the argument will be pi by 12 plus 2 pi over 3, which is equal to 3 pi by 4. And our final solution, z3, is 1.122 cis. And this time we're adding on, um, so from our original pi by 12, we'll add on um, two lots of 2 pi by 3. So we'll add 4 pi by 3 to this one, which gives us 17 pi by 12. And if the answer wanted you to leave your answers in rectangular form, you'd need to convert all of those back into rectangular form as well. Now, just one last little thing to finish this off. That last solution there, we've got 17 pi by 12, which, which goes over pi. It's a top heavy fraction. Now, we've seen how to deal with that before because we talk about things being in the principal argument zone. So if we've gone over pi like this and we've got 17 over 12 of um, pi, then we need to um, actually give the negative underneath instead that would be equivalent. Now the whole circle is 2 pi, so if we do 2 take away 17 twelfths, we get the remaining fraction which is 7 twelfths of pi here. So our final answer there we're just going to fix up to make that to be negative 7 twelfths of pi. Or negative 7 pi by 12.